life well lived. You know, SMU fans have waited a long oh, time yeah. for a season like this. You know, the Mustangs <laughs> are undefeated and ranked for the first time in more than 30 years. Yeah, they've certainly ponied up. It's been a long road back since SMU received the death penalty in 1987, and the school self-imposed another year without football. Here's Mike Leslie with why this resurrection took so long. Bouchelle looking for Prochet! Those uniforms and that, that Mustang on that helmet means what it did when I was a little kid. It is a resurrection on the hilltop. SMU with a signature win. A program once killed back from the death penalty. The fan base, the community, uh, how long they've wanted this. SMU football plays Temple on Saturday in a meeting of top 25 teams. A first for SMU since October 12, 1985. Quite a bit has happened since then. It was the most successful program in college football in the early 80s, national championship contenders. But there was one problem. Uh, I received uh, $25,000 to attend SMU. People knew me from driving a Datsun 280ZX. A rampant cheating scandal with boosters paying the players. We would go and play games, and people would throw money on the, on the field. SMU was one of many programs paying players in those days, but in the heart of Dallas, at the center of a major media market, the Mustangs were the ones who got caught. I hoped for the longest time that the story wasn't true. But I'm incredibly proud of the fact that we were the ones who reported it. Is that your letter? The SMU football program could be subject to further sanctions, possibly including the NCAA's so-called death penalty. And the relationship between SMU fans and WFAA hasn't been the same since. WFAA is still not four letters that are enjoyed over here. They, they are a four-letter word. WFAA? Yes, sir. Oh, it, was that, it was that man named Dale Hansen. That was the person. But, you know, that was his job. Well, you know, again, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. And Xavier Jones touchdown. 33 years later, SMU is finally starting to turn the corner. But what took so long? I don't, I don't necessarily think they, you know, wanted to come back and, and be a winning program from day one. They were rejecting kids that, that should have been allowed to, to, to play football and, and go to school at, at SMU. Uh, and made it almost impossible for coaches. We, we did that for 25 years, and, and, and we sucked. You get the sense there's a little magic on the hilltop this year? Now, they don't have that problem. 6-0 and to start the season and rank 19th in the country. The fan base is already dreaming bigger, as in bigger conferences. I think it's attractive, uh, you know, being in Dallas. We've got to win football games. If that happens, then I think I think somebody who's looking to expand or as conference realignment shakes up, I think they'd be crazy not to consider uh, a team like SMU. What Sonny Dykes looks like he's on the cusp of doing now, I think it's just the beginning of what could be a very good story. Yeah, I was on the SMU campus today, and you can really feel the energy. The, the students are pumped about what's happening with their football team right now. Yeah, I was camping out uh, with the Cub Scouts with my son a few weeks yeah. ago, and some of the dads were watching the SMU game in their tent, <laughs> so you could hear them yelling out, Pony up, pony Ooh, up. Yeah. All right. Well, you don't want to miss.